Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner slash um, Chassis Sim Tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about a real hot button topic right now that's going around, say, circa February to March 2022, and that is porpoising. What is it and how you deal with it? Now, porpoising is a problem that all high downforce cars are going to be prone to. This is not just a new thing that's happened because the new F1 cars now all of a sudden have to run ground effect um, tunnels. Porpoising will affect any, uh, any high downforce race car where you've got CLAs north about two and a half to three. It doesn't matter whether the floor, whether you're dealing with an underbody floor, it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with a flat, bo uh, with a flat bottom floor. All high downforce cars are going to be susceptible to this at some point. And what it is, is it's a frequency pitching problem induced by the aero and it becomes particularly marked at speed. And so we're going to discuss what it is, what drives it, and more importantly, we're going to talk about, give you a quick cheat sheet um, guide of um, how you um, deal with this. So let's get started. So what drives porpoising? As I said before, porpoising is a pitch is an oscillation is a high speed is a high frequency pitch oscillation um, that, that um, is induced by the arrow at speed. So typically, what happens is either the front wing chokes, and what happens is the rear is the front pops up, and then the downforce reengages and it pushes it down. Or ditto at the rear. What happens is that as the car compresses to the ground, if the rear compresses first, um, the diffuser stalls, cutting off the downforce sending the rear of the car back up, the downforce re-engages and you go, and what happens is that you have a um, pretty, uh, is that you have a high frequency oscillation and particularly at speed, this can be um, rather um, violent. Now, as I said before, you typically, this is induced by two things. Number one, either um, there's something untoward going on with the aero map, either at the front or the rear, it could be caused by both. It can be caused when, um, the um, aero balance is at a significant moment away from the center of gravity, so it sets up a um, so it uh, sets up a pitch mo a pitch moment. It can also be induced by really badly conditioned um, spring and damper packages. And typically, what you'll have is with porpoising, you'll have a number of these different elements that um, are coming together. And really, when these come together, you've got to be very very mindful about what drives what. So, why is porpoising so pronounced? To really understand why porpoising so, is so pronounced, we need to understand um, the bicycle model of the car. Now, here what I've done is I've lifted a section from chapter six of my book, The Dynamics of the Race Car, where I really talk about the aero effects of what it does um, to the car modes in um, great detail. But to give you the quick elevator speech, what we've got here is that when we've got our spring and damper package, Particularly what we've got here is that we've got our um, heave mode here. We've got our pitch mode here. Purely because of the springs, the system is, rel uh, the system is relatively um, uh, stable provided um, your choice of spring and dampers are okay. But what happens is that the aero will tend to destabilize this. And this is something that I go into great depth into my book, um, uh, The Dynamics of the Race Car, where I sort of give you a little bit more color in terms of what these terms look like. But bottom line, the aero will tend to destabilize this. Now, what happens is that when you get badly conditioned aero, these terms become quite large and hence start to take uh, start to destabilize the whole plant. So that pretty much is the mathematics of what drives um, uh, the porpoising pro uh, what drives the porpoising problem. So that's pretty much a quick elevator speech of what porpoising is and where it comes from. Okay, dealing with this. First things first, you absolutely must know your aero map. If you do not know your aero map, you might as well pack up and go home. And indeed, one of the things that is, is absolutely critical is that you have to validate this aero map from race data. And indeed, one of the discussions right now of um, the porpoising issues that are affecting Formula One cars is the fact they haven't been able to get the cars low enough in either CFD analysis or wind tunnel testing to expose these critical elements of the aero map, which is one of the reasons in chassis sim we've gone to a great deal of trouble to make sure that you can pull things like your aero map and your tire models 
from the race data because your race data is always the final arbiter of what the car is doing. It's your end point, it's your start point, it's also your end point as well. And indeed, I think for me, what is going on right now uh, puts paid to the almost ridiculous economics of, oh, if we ban testing, everything is going to be okay. The problem is it opens up a whole nother um, can of worms. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think we should return to the days where F1 teams could run separate race teams 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But whether you're talking F1, whether you're talking NASCAR, whether you're talking um, any of the, uh, of the mid-formula, you need to have a reasonable testing allowance so you can go out there and validate those things that would otherwise be very, very difficult to validate with either CFD tools and wind tunnel tools. But anyway, pseudo rant over. Dealing with this, make no mistake, uh, make no mistake ladies and gentlemen, D, uh, the, your, the, shaker rig, the chassis sim shaker rig simulation is about to become your very best friend because this is my first go-to whenever I'm dealing with either specking dampers um, for any car, whether it be a high downforce um, open wheel or whether it be a touring car. And in particular, when we start talking about high downforce um, open wheelers, the ability to combine what you're dealing with the aero map and being able to model it here is an absolute lifesaver. And I just don't say that because of the fact that I have a vested commercial interest in this. I say this because I've, I've lost count of the number of chassis sim customers who have actually used this tool to solve their porpoising problem. And typically what you're doing here is, and this is something I go into um, in much greater depth in the chassis sim boot camps, is that you want to minimize your cross-pitch mode response. So typically, if you have an e-heave input, if you've got a really bad porpoising problem, what will happen is the cross-pitch mode here is going to be quite large. And what you're going to be doing is throwing in an awful lot of effort to minimize this. Now, just a quick word on how you set this up. The way that you set this up, it's a little bit different from when you use a track replay or lap time simulation. What you're doing is you're focusing your area on a particular speed or a particular car condition. So here I've set up a test for 150k an hour. I've put in the minimum, uh, I put in the input speed of um, input speed velocity of the road. And as a rough rule of thumb, I typically will take a look at my damping velocities and divide them by three. Rough rule of thumb, but it gets you by. And uh, so, and then I'll specify uh, specify an export file name. But make no mistake, that ability. That gives you that real window into how to um, into into how the how to deal with this, and this is not just saved my neck on multiple occasions. It saved my customers' necks on uh, multiple occasions. So, porpoising cheat sheet. Now, of course, this is not one of these things that um, you take you treat um, like the Ten Commandments that this will absolutely work. This is more to give you a way through the jungle so that you can use. Um, so you can use your aero tools, use your simulation tools like chassis sim to get on top of this problem and get on top of it fast. Now, first things first, fix the aero if you can. Now, here's the thing about if you've got a really badly conditioned aero pack, a package, yeah, you can mitigate it to some extent, but there's uh, but let's put this way, there's only so much stupidity and so much silliness that you can cater for. So if there's of something that's drastically going along in the aero package, you know, that involves going back to the aerodynamics and say, hey, look guys, we've got a problem, we need to sort this out. Okay, first things first, know your resonant frequency so you can stay away from it. And that's actually really, really key because what will tend to happen is that if you've got a frequency of bumps on the circuit that's say at about five to six hertz and the resonant frequency of the car is about five to six hertz and that corresponds to a um, uh, to your resonant pitch mode, you're going to have all sorts of dramas. So that's something to be acutely aware of. And knowing where that resonant frequency is, is a matter of going back here and seeing where the peak output on input is. So in this case, your resonant frequency here is about four hertz. Also too, you're gonna to be playing around quite a bit with your damping in your spring patch, and particularly your damping package. Now. Don't fall into the road car trap of having very little bump and plenty of rebound. That's all that, well, particularly for um, the racing per, uh, for, for your racing purposes, is not only does it kill grip, it actually makes the porpoising problem a hell of a lot worse because you're actually jacking the car uh, because you're actually jacking the car down, and then all of a sudden 
you stall over the front wing and the rear wing and, the, and this all starts again. You're going to have to be very nuanced in terms of the damping rates you select in the team. One of the things that I cover in the damper workbook and also too I talk about in the dynamics of um, the race car both in um, chapter four and chapter six is that particularly once you've got a lot of aero on the car for the low speed damping, it's going to that's going to virtually push you into damping ratios of about one or so, both for bump and rebound. And the reason it will do that is because controlling the plant now, uh, controlling your uh, sprung uh, your sprung mass plant becomes absolutely critical. Also, too, when it comes to the bump rubber, make sure when it engages, it is continuous. The worst thing in the world that I see is that when I see cars that particularly have either a front splitter or a front um, underwing um, stalling problem, what you'll see is on the third spring, you'll see pr uh, uh, you'll see pretty much a gap of nothing on the third spring until it gets about to about you know, 10 to 15 mil, and then it hits a bump rubber that's effectively a brick. That is the last thing that you want. From a dynamic perspective, it's one of the worst things that you can do. If you are dealing with an awful lot of downforce, what you want is that you want that bump rubber to engage uh, to engage continuously and very progressively. For example, um, on some time attack work that I did with a pro class car, I went to a great deal of trouble to make sure that the bump rubber engagement was very very smooth and very very progressive. And the reason I did that is that I this car this particular car was dealing with a truckload of downforce, and I was very, very mindful that I didn't want to engage, to have any suspension-induced um, porpoising. Also, too, I cannot ram home without a shadow of a doubt. The chassis sim shaker root toolbox in this regard is about to become your best friend. And I say this not just because of the fact that I have a vested financial interest in this. I say this because of both the work that I've done and that my customers have done in using this tool to resolve some very, very, um, uh, some very, very troublesome um, uh, por uh, porpoising issues. So, on that note, I'm going to leave you with that. Um, for those of you who are already members of the Chassis Sim community, particularly if you're Chassis Sim Elite customers, um, you um, should already have access to this tool. So, knock yourself out. Um, for those of you who are um, not Chassis Sim users yet, you can get your feet wet with the online simulation. You won't have access to the Shaker Root Toolbox but it will allow, at least allow you to have uh, to play with things like the track replay simulation so you can actually try this as well. So on that note, um, we'll conclude this tutorial and we'll catch you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner or the next Chassis Sim video tutorial.